Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome to the channel and appreciate you checking out this video. So uh, for this video, I want to talk about Google Stadia. Um, I've had some hands-on time with it. I've seen the two presentations Google gave, the first one around GDC and the last one the week before E3. And yeah, just want to give my general impressions. There's a couple of things that um, you know I want to kind of stress that I think a lot of people aren't really highlighting I'll say um, but you know again it's my thoughts my opinions um, again if you're already here checking out the channel please comment subscribe you know show me some love uh, the more I get the more I give I promise and uh, yeah just kind of looking to get things going get this channel going um, and have a lot more content to talk about so just uh, you know I'm using you guys as motivation so please support uh, subscribe, hit the uh, bell for uh, notifications, etc. All right. So, for those that don't know, uh, what is Google Stadia? Um, Google Stadia is Google's new streaming, all streaming game platform, uh, game service. Okay. So the idea is that you can stream your games on any device, uh, more specifically any device that can play YouTube, because the games actually are streamed through YouTube. Um, so game streaming isn't a brand new thing. Uh, it's something that we've seen a number of companies try over the last 10 years or so, uh, over a decade now. Uh, it started with uh, OnLive, a company called OnLive that uh, has since become defunct. They, they pretty much died. Um, but they kind of really started to push in terms of really investing in, in the idea of running a game on a cloud server somewhere and then broadcasting it to a client um, that the user can then uh, see and interact with, right? And uh, of course, at that stage, it was really laggy, uh, really wasn't that compelling, um, but it was a great start. Uh, since then, uh, Gaikai was another company that was at the time competing with OnLive. They've since been bought out by Sony uh, right before the PlayStation 4 launched. And Sony has converted Gaikai into PlayStation Now. For those that don't know, PlayStation 4 actually does have a game streaming service called PlayStation Now, where you can stream some PlayStation 4 games, mostly PS3 games, onto your play PlayStation 4 or PC. Uh, and I think it may work with like Sony phones, or at least it did at some point, I'm not sure. Um, and yeah, NVIDIA has tried this, you know, um, called the GeForce Now that you can stream through their Shield device and their, you know, um, GP, uh, sorry, PCs with NVIDIA GPUs. And, um, you know, Xbox is going to throw their hand in it with Project X Cloud, which is a bunch of Xboxes in the cloud uh, streaming Xbox games to your mobile devices, etc. This is definitely a big thing. This is almost certainly going to be the future uh, again just it's just this is basically the gaming version of what Netflix is to movies and what Spotify is to music uh, you know I mean you look at the world it's like yeah it's going to happen um, but I'm not sure that it's going to happen anytime soon um, and I'll explain my reasons for that but uh, so that's Stadia again you can stream from your PC your tablet your cell phone and your TV, um, the way they do it through TV is that it requires you to use a Chromecast Ultra dongle to connect to your TV. You can't just go through the TV direct, of course. Even if your TV has a YouTube app, um, that's not going to work. Um, and yeah, so Google is promising, you know, their promise with it is, is high quality streaming. High quality gaming where you don't need a physical device. You don't need your console. You don't need a PC where you can game at up to currently 4K resolution, 60 frames per second, 5.1 surround sound, and HDR, which essentially is, you know, kind of the state of the art in terms of spec, in terms of what you can do audiovisual-wise today. Well, not quite. I mean, you, you, you know, they're not talking about Dolby Atmos, for example, for sound, but, you know, you can get surround sound, HDR video, 4K resolution, 60 frames per second. That's their promise. Of course, to do that, you need a pretty robust internet connection, but we'll get into that. Um, some key uh, titles that they've been highlighting, talking about at their various streams. Um, Destiny 2 apparently is actually going to launch or be bundled with um, their pro uh, subscription package, 
uh, where you get their controller, which is really all you need. All you know, they advertise that all you really need is a controller. You get the controller, Destiny 2, uh, all of the DLC for Destiny 2, and everything is included, um, for essentially for free, um, bundled with that that pro package. Um, Ghost Recon Breakpoint, um, Borderlands 3, Doom Eternal, and a bunch of other games, uh, mostly third-party games, of course, that uh, have been out this year, came out this year, some came out last year or earlier, Final Fantasy 15 uh, was highlighted on there, Mortal Kombat 11, stuff like that, some that will be coming out later this fall, and there's been some games, especially at E3, that was announced as coming to Stadia uh, in the future. Um, so, I mean, yeah, they got a lot of the third-party games. Uh, what's missing is the first-party games, and I'll go into that. Um, but, yeah, so Google is essentially positioning this platform as being a replacement for your console and your PC. And not only, I mean, they're positioning that, but they're also speaking to us. They're speaking to the hardcore audience, the hardcore gamers, like myself, like you, if you're listening to this who already game on a, you know, pretty high-end console uh, or have a high-end PC that you already game on for the most part. We're the gamers. We're the ones that invest our time, our money to buy the latest games. We're watching the stream. They're doing, you know, live direct streams, right, to us. So that's who they're talking to at this point, and that's who they really want to sell this product to. And the promise, again, as you have heard and seen, 4K60, so high-spec, high-quality. Okay, um, so my general impression before I get into like breaking this stuff down, uh, you know, of course, the promise of high quality gaming on all of your devices is a solid thing. I mean, conceptually, you know, that's awesome, right? Who, who wouldn't want to game high quality game across all devices? Now, practically speaking, there's some issues with that. Your, you know, again, your internet connection doesn't carry with you everywhere. You may have a, a gigabit internet in your home, for example, but if you're, you know, on the bus you know, going to school or work, you don't necessarily have that, right? Um, if you're at a Starbucks, right, or a library, you don't necessarily have that, right? So this it's kind of contradictory in a way, this whole idea of, yeah, you know, you could take your, you know, your premium gaming experience with you anywhere you go. It's not really true, practically speaking, in the world we live in today, because you can't take your robust internet connection with you wherever you go, for example. But, I mean, the promise is still solid, right? Um, if anyone can do this, Google can, right? I mean, Google has a, an extensive cloud infrastructure. They're a huge, huge company with some of the brightest minds in the world. They've obviously uh, been investing a lot in this. They, as you see, they got Bill Harrison, who's a video game industry veteran, uh, used to work uh, with Microsoft and Sony and et cetera. Um, you know, they recently announced that they brought Jade Raymond, who is also a video game veteran, a uh, prominent video game veteran, uh, one of the creators of the Assassin's Creed games worked at Ubisoft for a while, and she's a great gaming mind. And she's supposedly heading up their Google's kind of first party studios that's supposed to be creating original game content, which of course will take some time. Uh, that studio really only formed late last year, as far as I know, so uh, it'll be a while before we see anything, but they're trying. So if anyone can kind of really make this thing happen, it's Google. Microsoft is also putting their, their um, hat in the ring, so to speak. And, you know, again, they have, you know, the Azure um, data centers around the world, sense of cloud network. Um, they are another company that can make it work. So I'm cautiously optimistic. I mean, you know, everybody that has tried this technology has failed for a reason. You know, it's not an easy problem. It's not an easy thing to solve. Um, and, you know, so I'm not sure that it's solved yet. Um, but, you know, we got to keep pushing and, and Google's doing that. So we'll see. Um, the biggest issues in terms of my impressions, again, um, you know, the promise is great, but it won't deliver all of this day one, of course, right? Um, the, the number of devices will be limited. Apparently, you know, for example, you'll only be able to play on Google Pixel phones, not any phones, not your iPhone or your Samsung, you know, stuff like that. I'm sure they'll expand it to that eventually, but right now, initially, they're saying it's going to be Google Pixel phones. Uh, again, you need a Comcast Ultra dongle. Uh, in order to be able to do it through your television, you know, um, yeah, and then of course the content is going to be lacking in terms of the original exclusive content uh, initially. Um, most of the games that you know they're talking about are third-party games that, quite frankly, most of the 
hardcore people, the people that really care and really want to play those games, they already play those games at equal, if not higher quality on local machines, a high spec PC or, a, you know, Xbox One X, PS Pro or Pro, something of that nature. They've already played a lot of these games, you know, MK11 and Destiny 2 and, you know, um, Division 2 and, you know, these kind of games. Um, and the games that are be coming out around the same time, you know, launching with the other platforms, again, it's like, well, I can already play this because I already have, I already invested in a high-end console or high-end PC for that hardcore person. So, you know, uh, we'll see. I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, so over time, I think that, you know, this thing can evolve over time. They'll they'll work out the kinks. The, the, the data streams will get better. The content will get better. The device support will get better. And it will be a pretty compelling solution overall. I think, um, will it replace consoles or PCs in the next five years? I don't think so. And a lot of people don't think so. I'm not alone in that, that assessment. Um, you know, but generally speaking, it's, it's a solid proposition. Definitely keep my eyes on it. It's one of those things that, you know, wouldn't be surprised that, yeah, I mean, I may give it a try. You know, I may get the founders pack or, or at least try a couple of games on there at some point, um, just to kind of demo games. Um, you know, eventually if they get some exclusive content, may try some stuff out that way. Um, but I don't see myself again tossing aside my PlayStation uh, or PC, you know, or Xbox to game on Sadia. I don't see that from what I've gathered so far. Okay, so most people will talk about um, some of the issues with Stadia being the obvious things for that affect most cloud gaming platforms, right? Input lag being one of the biggest that you know fundamentally affects the way the game feels. You know, it's a longer delay when you press the button to what you see on the screen than what you're used to um, when you're playing locally on a console or PC. And um, of course, that is, you know, that, that can that can break the experience. It's gotten a lot better from the days of on live, um, but it still can be noticeable in some cases, depending on your internet connection, depending on the service itself. Um, so that's always an issue. Video quality issues. Again, at the end of the day, instead of having the game being rendered. Um, on the hardware that you have connected to your monitor or television, you're basically getting a video, a compressed video representation of the game that's being rendered on the server somewhere, right? And with that, you know, comes video compression artifacts, macro blocking, um, you know, some kind of ghosting and, and stuff like that, that, you know, again, it doesn't look like a pristine quality image that, you know, you can expect to get if you play the game locally. Uh, and then, of course, you know, practicality of it, you know, internet data caps. A lot of people, they may have internet description, but they have data caps. You know, and you play a game, like a heavy game, at 4K even, or even 1080p, for half an hour, an hour, you pretty much hit your data cap for like a month, <laughs> right? So, you know, this is going to require a lot of, you know, a lot of data. And then uh, just connection speed. I mean, Google's saying you can play anywhere from 10, mega, 10 megabits to 35 but you know, I I have a, a gigabit uh, internet in my in my house coming into my house, and of course you know I spread that. I have a router, I have some things that are hardwired, and I have Wi-Fi you know throughout the house. And I tried you know on GoogleStadia.com you know there's a website and they have a test where you can test your network to see um, what quality you can get with Stadia. And I did that test right in front of my router via Wi-Fi, and I only got 20 like 24 megabits somehow. <laughs> Right. Um, so it was saying I couldn't even do, get the max. I couldn't even get 4K. And that's with a gigabit connection. Of course, I tried it on my desktop, which is hardwired. And I, you know, and it got like 700 megabits, you know, so I was able to max it out. But again, that kind of level of, of uh, Internet connection won't carry you everywhere. You know, it's not something that you'll be able to take with you anywhere you go. So, you know, that's the other issue of it. But, the, you know, all of that is true. And that's true for xCloud. And that's been true for PlayStation Now and so forth. But the biggest issue that Google has that most people in the industry at least are taking note of or, or, or catching is not any of the technical stuff. It's the gaming content. Without gaming content, you are nothing. And this is the most difficult aspect of the gaming industry. If a company wanted to come in and say, oh, yeah, I want to be in gaming, you know, let's just, let's just be a, a major player in the gaming industry. You can't do it. It's one of the hardest industries to do it. Sony and Nintendo and Microsoft have spent decades, decades honing their craft of making games or um, you know establishing relationships and partnerships with the you know the most talented 
greatest game um, makers in the world to make games for their platform. It took decades, you know. The last company to really do that has been Microsoft back in, you know, 2001 with the Xbox, right? There's a reason for that. We have giants and Amazon and Google now trying, but, and Apple even, you know, and there's been rumors for years and years, oh, these companies are going to try to do this and do that, you know, and we've had other, you know, startup companies. We had, we saw what happened with Valve and the so-called Steam Box, right? And uh, Ouya as an Android gaming console and all of this stuff. It's, you need to have like compelling content. And it's a hard thing because most of the gaming audience today are completely entrenched with Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo. We've been with them now for three generations. And everyone, you know, has their alliances, affiliations, and, and favorites. But they still, you know, know those companies and they know their games and they know their products. And if someone else came in and just threw some random game, it's just kind of like, okay, I don't need that. I already have plenty of options you know, great option with these three companies, between the three companies, you know, NPC, of course. Um, it's a hard thing to do. Google obviously gets that, you know, bringing in Jade, trying to start their own studio. I know, I know they're working on partnerships. They've been obviously reaching out to a lot of third parties. They're trying to get the games that the, pe the gamers care about in terms of the third parties, for sure. Um, you know, notice that, you know, they didn't talk about having the really, really big games on PC, especially in terms of community. Uh, in terms of things like League of Legends or um, Rocket League even and um, Apex Legends and PUBG, Fortnite. None of those games were mentioned uh, at any of the two Google events. I'm sure they're talking and trying, um, but, you know, they're going to need something big like that. Rockstar has been mentioned, has been listed for them. So is that, I think it's probably Grand, Th um, Grand Theft Auto V, which has just been on everything. And it's still a huge, huge game. It's the largest selling game of all time. Literally, it is the largest selling game of all time. Uh, so that would make sense. Um, but again, that game is also like seven years old, <laughs> right? It came out on the 360 and PS3. Um, so, um, and again, if anyone that wanted to play that game has already played it. Uh, is it for Red Dead 2? Uh, that would be awesome because it's not on PC yet, um, but we'll see, you know, but they need those kind of big publishers and big um, blockbuster games really on there. Hey, why would someone, a hardcore gamer especially, that already has a PC, already has a PS4 uh, or Pro, already has an Xbox or Xbox One X, um, and probably will have next-gen consoles, why would they play Ghost Recon Breakpoint on Stadia when they are probably already have it and can get a superior experience? on any of those other devices, you know, um, you got to wonder, you got to think, uh, again, why would it even try to deal with the input lag, but the video compression issues or the internet, you know, uh, vol the, vol the volatile nature of the internet connection and stuff like that, when you could just, you know, pop it in, you know, and play it locally and everything works great, right? Um, fundamental problem, so we'll see, but content is really going to be key for them. Um, so, what has the reception been like so far? Well, here's the thing. They've only really positioned this thing and marketed it so far to the hardcore audience, the hardcore media and the hardcore gamers. And I think that's a mistake. Among the hardcore gamers, by and large, from what I gather, I mean, I've listened to various, you know, uh, people posting impressions on YouTube. Uh, NeoGAF did a, a little poll uh, where they basically said, you know, are you interested in getting Stadia? Yes, no, maybe kind of thing. 85% of the NeoGAF community said no. <laughs> 85%. And there's a reason for that. Again, let's take a step back. Who is cloud gaming really for? Who should it be for? Now, Google will have you believe that it's really for the hardcore gamer that wants to play the best games at the best quality. The problem is... I'm still not convinced, and a lot of people aren't, that the technology is ready to meet that promise. Because I have tried every cloud streaming service from OnLive to PlayStation Now to xCloud recently at E3, and I did try Google Stadia at GDC. And all of them are pretty similar. And, and I also tried NVIDIA Shield at a, a SIGGRAPH, I think, a couple of years ago, uh, GeForce Now. I tried them all, and they all kind of felt very similar. And they all basically had the same issues and had the same conclusion for me. I would not want to play games on any of those platforms over being able to play it locally on a console and PC. Now, I am a hardcore gamer. I am someone who 
uh, you know, invest tons of time and energy um, into playing games and buying games and buying hardware and, and etc. I am someone who can, you know, I work in games, have worked in games for years. I have a degree and have studied, you know, computer science and computer graphics, and I know this stuff. And I can look at a game and dissect the graphics. I can recognize and point out the graphical flaws. I can just look at a game by eye and tell what kind of anti-aliasing solution is using. You know, I can see the quality of the shadows. You know, what games use, you know, PBR. And I could tell how fast the, the you know, roughly what the frame rate the game is running at just by looking at it by eye. Um, you know, I'm a discerning gamer, right? Which most hardcore gamers are. They're sensitive to frame rate. They're sensitive to their controller. They want things to be a certain way, you know, blah, blah, blah. And those people are the type that will analyze every frame. They will look at every missed frame, every drop frame, every ounce of stutter, every second of input lag, you know, every video compression artifact, etc., and then say, yeah, that takes away from my experience because they're used to having the top end experience for the most part, right? The casual gamer, the folk that just kind of pop in NBA 2K or, you know, Call of Duty or Apex or Fortnite here and there, they don't necessarily care about that stuff. That's the person that Google should be marketing this thing to, especially at this point when it's brand new. But instead, they're going for the hardcore. And I think that's a mistake because the hardcore, uh, hardcore gamer has already played these same games at equal or superior quality levels because that's what they do. They already have invested in their hardware. They already have invested in their software, right? <laughs> so they care about this stuff. Um, the hardcore gamer is going to notice all of those details and what's wrong with the video stream. The hardcore gamer cares about quality, right? So cloud gaming right now does not deliver the best quality. It just doesn't, despite what Google says, because of the issues are already outlined. In terms of the unpredictable nature of your networking, because you know, again, you're promising being able to play this stuff anywhere and everywhere, but your network, even if you have a robust network, it doesn't carry you anywhere and everywhere, you know, because they are lacking in having exclusive content for their platform right now, you know, it's in all of these other factors, it's not going to replace your console or PC. It would be a great addition potentially. Uh, it would be something that you can have a subscription to. And just say, yeah, when you are, you know, uh, on, I think that really, you know, cloud gaming in general and this Google Stadia really is for that busy individual that loves to game, but doesn't really have a whole lot of time that has to travel. They're always on the go, uh, i.e. a student in a university, a professional who, you know, is on the road a lot on planes and, and you know, stuff like that. That's who really this should be for because they can take their experience with them on the go as they go. They want to finish up a game. They want to, you know, they're, they have a, a trip, a work trip, and they're just completely away from their system. They can, you know, do a raid in Destiny 2 at their, from their hotel, you know, something like that um, on their laptop. You know, that's awesome. That's cool. But then when they get back home, you best believe they're going to want to play, play on their, you know, 4K RTX, you know, graphics PC or on the Xbox One X or Next Gen Scarlet or PS5 or whatever it is, right? They're going to want to still want to do that, you know? That's who this really should be for. And Microsoft, I think, has the right approach here because Microsoft has been consistently saying, Phil Spencer himself consistently saying that xCloud is not about replacing Xbox, not about replacing PC. It's just meant to be another option for folks who want to take their game on the go and at this point that's what it should be now he phil spencer himself said and i agree over time and five years from now who knows what it could look like is it possible that the level of quality the content the infrastructure could be at a point where a lot of folks can say you know what yeah instead of getting that console i'm just gonna you know rock my stadia my stadia subscription sure that's very possible um you know a lot of people would do that. I still don't think everyone would, would do that. There always would be a place for local hardware, I believe. It's like Just like there's, you know, still some people, including myself, <laughs> that want to still get disc. Um, they, you know, they want to still watch a Blu-ray or a 4K Blu-ray or whatever uh, instead of just watching something on Netflix. You know, I, I use Netflix all the time, like a lot of people, um, but it's in addition to, you know, it's another option. They have a lot of content on there, but every now and then when I really want to have the best experience of my home theater, I'm going to pop in my 4K Blu-ray and watch that. So I think the same thing will be true for games. Um, 
So anyway, uh, you know, the final word is yes, this is happening. This is inevitable. Uh, I think that Microsoft, Google will have a place that, you know, I don't think they're going to beat each other up, so to speak, because they're kind of focusing on different things. Uh, I think that Google's strategy of positioning it as a replacement for your console at this point is kind of misguided. And the people that they're talking to is also misguided. It's a misguided message to that audience uh, because they know better. And that's why 85% of Neo Gaffers are saying no. That's why a lot of people are kind of like, yeah, it seems cool, but I'll pass. You know, like that's generally what a lot of the gamer audience is saying at, at this point. Now, of course, when people try it, you know, maybe like, wow, this is great and whatever. Even if it is, even if it could deliver like a perfect experience, you know, again, there are still something to say. There are people who love having the physical devices. There are people who are purists. You know, they want to have a box. They want to have, um, you know, again, purest video, purest quality. You know, in some cases, even still have a disc or something, you know, to be able to see. They want to physically own something. Because, of course, with this whole service, you don't physically own anything. So you got to remember that. But uh, some people are going to want to do that. Uh, we'll see. I think at the end of the day, I, you know, I'll keep an eye on it. I'm, I'm applauding Google for trying, Microsoft for trying. Sony, I'm sure, is going to still, you know, have their hat in this ring as well. There'll be some kind of evolution of PlayStation now for, for next gen. Um, but... Uh, we'll see. I think that Google and Microsoft are in a better position to, to lead in this space. And yeah, it's going to be a part of our future, but um, consoles and PC and just local hardware will still exist. That's my take. So anyway, thanks for watching the video. I'm going to shut this down now. Uh, Till next time, again, comment. What do you think of Google Stadia? Uh, what do you think of what I'm saying uh, about content, uh, about future, about some of the issues that it will have? Uh, let me know. And Talk to you later. Thanks.